Hello everybody, uh, we're still talking about the absorption impact columns and in this video we're gonna see uh, one example and solve it using Microsoft Excel. So this example is uh, the example uh, demonstrated in the textbook uh, that we are using Ginkopolis, the transport processes and uh, unit operations or uh, uh, separation process principles um, and uh, it is about the design of an absorption column uh, there are a lot of information here I recopied all the information so they are easier for us to follow um, so uh, the I know that the this is the type of packing which is 2.54 uh, millimeter ceramic rings and uh, I know that this is uh, it's not gonna make a difference regarding the solution except for uh, the knowledge of the mass transfer coefficients and this is something that we will see shortly um, and I'm, uh, I'm uh, designing or I want to design a column to absorb the sulfur dioxide from air using pure water so this is the first information that it's pure water so the the mole fraction of uh, SO2 in the inlet water is zero um, and I know I'm operating at this temperature and pressure uh, and th again this is not going to make any difference except for the knowledge of the equilibrium data that I know that I'm going to use equilibrium data at these conditions um, I know that the entering gas contains 20 mole percent SO2 uh, so this is the the mole uh, fraction of the uh, SO2 in the feed and the desired uh, outlet concentration to be or the mole fraction to be 2 percent and I know and, and here is a point that um, uh, so, so this is what the 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 problem statement is so I, I kept it as it is uh, so that w we face some like issues with the solution and we, we try to tackle the solutions so the, the it's given that the inlet air flow rate is uh, this number in kilogram moles uh, air per second so this is the uh, on, on the solvent uh, solute free basis and I know that the inner water flow rate is with this flow rate at again the the inert uh, water so this is the solute free basis um, the tower cross section area is given so I know it and uh, I know that f for this this packing that I have at this temperature and pressure I know that the mass uh, volumetric mass transfer coefficients can be calculated from these equations so this is uh, the, the the useful relation that I'm gonna uh, like use in uh, uh, or, or from the knowledge of the the type of, of packing that I have um, and it says that the units of both mass transfer coefficients is in kilogram mole per uh, second meter cube mole fraction and it's given that this is important that the GX and GY are the total mass fluxes and this is this is the point here that it's total the three words are important it's total mass and flux so total it means that it's not on a solute free basis like the fluorides that were given here and it's mass not moles as this given here and it's flux which means that it's per unit area and that's why its unit is kilogram per meter square second of liquid or gas and it's desired to find the uh, desired uh, the, 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 the column height that will achieve the desired absorption uh, the first thing is to keep in mind that uh, there, are, there is one information that's still missing which is the equilibrium relation or the equilibrium data and if you check the textbook you'll not find the equilibrium data given here and he started the solution directly after uh, calculating the or, or asking us to calculate the tower height and the way he th this was given as uh, like a graphical uh, or, or, or graphical data so he, he just give this as a graph and as if it is uh, like a known piece of information so what I did I used the web plot digitizer like I showed you in a previous video to extract the data from the uh, the graph and um, I, I now have the equilibrium data and we need to uh, use the information that we have in Microsoft Excel one thing that's for me that's really really important is to organize your file in a proper way so that it makes the solution easier for you and this is what i did uh, in 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 a, in a sense or another before i start so I, I put all the equations that i'm gonna use i did some derivations and i put all the equations so that they are ready for me to use in microsoft excel these are the data i got from the uh, from the graph um, I put uh, like a place here for the givens, for the L dash, for V dash, uh, and I put the, the, the values for X2, Y1, Y2, 
uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm leaving all the rest of the numbers that I don't know or I'm gonna calculate, I left them black. I put a table here, uh, I, I put uh, again, so these are the equations maybe to revise them, this is the operating line, this is another form of the operating line, this is the interfacial concentration equation that we're gonna use to calculate the, the interfacial concentration, um, this is the equation that we're gonna use to calculate the column height, and this is the K, the volumetric mass transfer coefficient in the gas phase, volumetric mass transfer coefficient in the liquid phase, so I put all the equations so that I have everything in, same, in the same place, so I don't have to go back and forth between this file or the PowerPoint or whatever the other file that they have the equations in. Um, I put here some other equations for calculating the GX and GY. They're gonna be kinda uh, some details here and I'm gonna keep it till we reach this point. Uh, I put the table that I mentioned in my uh, previous video that we will have a table so that we calculate the, the uh, uh, parameters one by one. Um, and for you to not think that I did everything before I start, uh, I, I have already solved this problem before before I, I record this video. So I, I know uh, that this is what I am gonna need. Uh, but when I started the very first time, I put it like column by column. I, I first put the X, the uppercase X, and then the uppercase Y, and then what's then the next step? I need to calculate GX and GY. So I put columns for GX and GY, then I need to calculate the case. So I put a column for the case, then, then so, so I, I put it one by one. Uh, so ju just don't think that uh, I, uh, this is something that is, is easy to do and, and you have to do it before you start. No, I, I, I do it step by step. And you just need to keep, to keep your eye on your, your goal and put steps that you follow so that you can reach your goal. And at the end it looks nice, I know, but, but it's not gonna look nice from the very first time. This is something I just wanted you to keep in mind. This is the, the same case for, for all the other files that they did for the distillation, for the absorption in trays, uh, in tray columns, and in, in all other files that I have, uh, I, I did the same thing or followed the same the same procedure. So uh, I, I may may put a lot of work in this this file, but at the end it's, it's just step by step and it it looks nice at the end. So this is something that you you need to think of. Um, now let's uh, let's see. So uh, first, I I will need from these equations. You notice that in some equations I have the uppercase x, and here I, I have the lowercase x and so y's. So I I will keep both data uh, available. So in case I need any of them, I will go for it. Uh, so so I, I I get them done and ready whenever I want. I, I might not need some of them, but I I have them in case I need them. So for the x, uh, I know that this is gonna be the x divided by one minus uh, lowercase x and in case you get confused with this uh, just keep in mind that the uppercase x is the value of uppercase x is larger than the value of lowercase x so you have to divide it by a value that is smaller than one and this is what i i do actually to remind myself that this is the equation um, so these are the values of x2, uh, the, the mole ratios x2, uh, y1, and y2. Now I want to calculate x1. So x1 can be calculated from the overall mass transfer over the column, which says that the number of moles of SO2 in equals the number of moles of SO2 out. So this is L dash x1 plus V dash Y2 equals L dash X2 plus V dash Y1. You can rearrange the, the, the equation or rewrite it so that you have X1 as a function of the rest of the parameters. So I'm gonna put it as V dash, um, uh, I'm sorry, it's equal to X2, the uppercase X2 plus V dash divided by L dash multiplied by Y1 minus Y2. So this is the uh, mole ratio of SO2 in the uh, the outlet uh, liquid stream and I can do the same to calculate it uh, the mole fraction from the mole ratios in this case, in this case uh, oops. Um, I'm gonna divide it by 1 plus uh, the, the x1 because it has to be a bigger value so I, ha I know now the uh, I now know uh, the uh, mole fractions and mole ratios of the all, all the streams that are going and coming out of the column. Now I need to um, calculate the, uh, or, or, or draw the operating line, um, get values that will be, uh, I, I'm gonna use as YA and XA. So these are the, the, the operating line data. So the operating line data, 
you can you can assume random values and 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 you have to keep this in mind that i'm gonna uh, separate the the region from y starting from 0.02 till 0.2 into regions and uh, depending on these regions i'm gonna uh, uh, do the calculations for each one of them and at the end use the trapezoidal rule to uh, calculate the total area under the curve which is the height of the column according to this equation but what I'm gonna do is to uh, break it uh, or break this this spacing into or this spacing into equal intervals um, this the, the, for me this is easier uh, so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna start with the uh, y2 because the integration starts with y2 and I'm gonna go for I, I have this uh, 11 uh, uh, this this column consists of 11 rows which uh, which is uh, 10 intervals so this is what I, I want to do so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, add each one to uh, 1 over 10 of the interval that I have here so I'm gonna uh, put this minus this but I need to put f4 here and f4 here and uh, oops I'm sorry and divide this by 10 so what I'm, I'm, I'm doing now is that I'm adding each step 1 over 10 of the spacing between these two values and this will end up with 0.25 so I'm, 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 I'm now right so I, I now can check it pretty easily the X can be got from the equilibrium relation the same way I use this equation I'm gonna use it here so it's gonna be equal to X2 uh, plus v dash but here I'm gonna put uh, f4 or click on f4 and some more dollar signs and then multiply by y so this is x1 which corresponds to y1 which is this uh, minus y2 which is this so now I have um, and, and this is this is good it gives x2 equals to 0 which may, means that I'm, I'm, I'm going in the right direction uh, and uh, oh I, I think I forgot to click a 4 for y2 which is uh, this and I should be good to go now uh, so now yeah so now it's working and you can check as well that the operating line is valid for the last point which is this point so it's it's working I got x uh, the mole ratios for the operating line I can calculate the mole fractions from this um, and I'm gonna apply it for all of them oops I'm sorry so now I have the operating line it was already there uh, saved on the uh, on the graph so I now have the operating line the equilibrium curve and if you check it it's it's almost the same way but it, it in in the excel file it's it's kind of squeezed a little bit but it's it's the same uh, now let's go for g y and for g x g y is kind of tricky because as we said the g y um, is has the units of uh, uh, mass the total mass flux this is what we mentioned so this is total mass flux so for, for to calculate the g y and g x from the l dash and v dash it means that i have to uh co convert the uh, the the uh, solute free bases into uh, the, the the total uh, molar flow rate uh, basis and from molar flow rate into mass flow rate and from rate into flux so one thing which is the easiest part is i'm gonna divide by the cross-section area which is not a big deal but i have to convert this from uh, moles to mass uh, and this is this requires the use of uh, molecular weight so what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna calculate the average molecular weight of the vapor stream and the average molecular weight of the gas stream so the molecular weight of the of the gas stream is the molecular weight of the air multiplied by the mole fraction of the air plus the, mo the, the mole fraction of SO2 multiplied by the uh, I mean the molecular weight of SO2 multiplied by the mole fraction of SO2 and the same here for water and SO2 um, and uh, to convert this from uh, or to calculate this from this so I'm gonna multiply the V which is kilomole per second by the average molecular weight which is kilogram per kilomole so the kilomoles will cancel, cancel each other and uh, I will end up with kilograms per second uh, meter square 
but this is v so i have to divide the v dash by one minus y so this is the final equation that i'm going to use to calculate gy and it's similar to this case uh, for calculating gx um, uh, gy uh, i'm gonna go for this one by one it's gonna be v dash um, click it four divided by minus y oops i think i'm writing somewhere else oh i was not writing anyway so uh, it's uh, v dash divided by one minus let's take a look at here one minus y uh, multiply it by the uh, molecular weight of air so he used 29 as the molecular weight of air i think it was 29 if i'm not wrong um, 29 right uh, and uh, multiply it by one minus y uh, plus the molecular rate of SO2, he used this 64.1. I know it's 62, but uh, 64, but this, uh, I'm, I'm gonna stick to what he's saying in the textbook. Multiply it by Y, and all this is divided by the cross sectional area of the column, which is this, and click on F4. So I'm now good to go. So I think uh, I'm. I'm uh, I'm, I'm, I think I'm right. So uh, one thing we can do, and this is what I'm gonna do, is to like go one by one to make sure that I'm fine. So the first value is 0 0.213, and the last is 0 0.316. Um, so it's almost the same values. Uh, so so this is uh, this is nice. Uh, one thing that you need to keep in mind if you are solving this uh, exercise uh, and checking with the textbook that I have the. Uh, kind of the luxury to put a lot of uh, a lot of spaces here or a lot of intervals uh, but in in his case uh, i think he was solving manually uh, because this book is kind of old so he, he he put only five and one two three four intervals so the the points in between are going to be different and and that's why i'm checking with the with the points uh, in the maximum and the minimum values of y which are going to be the same for my case and for his case um, and now for GX, I'm gonna do uh, the same. I'm gonna use this equation, which is um, maybe I need to zoom out a little bit so that uh, I can see both. Okay, so this is um, L dash and click on F4 divided by 1 minus X. Multiply it by the molecular weight of water, which is 18, multiply it by 1 minus x plus 64.1, which is the molecular weight of SO2, multiplied by x, and this is all divided by um, s, and click on, oops, f4. So this is 8.1377 and 8.24. Uh, yeah, it's almost the same as well for this case. So we are we're we're now okay. We're going well with uh, with what he's doing in the textbook. Now let's go to the next step, which is the calculation of ky. So now I have k uh, the the G, gx and gy. So it's gonna be direct substitution in the equation for the kya. It's gonna be 0 0.0594 multiplied by g1 power 0 0.7 plus gx multiplied by 0 0.25 and for um, now it's not plus it's multiplied by I'm sorry um, and for k dash x it's equal to 0.152 multiplied by gx power 0.82 so I have both calculated now and I can uh, I can say that I'm done with them so it's from 0.30, 0.034 to 0.045 uh, almost the same and from 0.849 to 0.857 so this is this is great so the next step is to calculate the interfacial concentrations um, of the uh, SO2 in the liquid and the gas phase or the mole fraction of the concentrations uh, this is gonna be kind of tricky so I'm gonna leave it for the next video so uh, we will continue inshallah next video and I'll see you then goodbye